Hi everybody, my name is Faith from Full Potential Learning Academy and today we are going to learn the difference between homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids. Let's get started. So here we have a cell and human cells have a variety of organelles that are responsible for specific functions for the cell. But for today's lesson, I just need you to memorize that the cytoplasm encompasses all cell organelles and parts. Now let's zoom into the cell's nucleus. The nucleus contains a variety of structures. The nuclear envelope acts as a barrier separating the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Nuclear pores are like bridges that connect the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Nuclear pores are responsible for transporting ions, water, and a variety of other substances into and out of the nucleus. The nucleus also contains the nucleolus, which is responsible for ribosome biogenesis. And finally, the nucleus contains the nucleoplasm, which contains chromatin and other structural components of the nucleus. So you may be asking, why are we talking about chromatin? Weren't we trying to learn the differences between chromosomes and sister chromatins? Well, to learn about chromosomes and chromatin, we have to learn the progression of DNA to chromosomes. So DNA is composed of ribose sugar, phosphates, and nitrogenous bases. Strings of DNA can be wrapped around eight histone proteins. DNA and histone proteins together create nucleosomes. Nucleosomes can be grouped together into a string called chromatin. And chromatin, when it enters prophase and either mitosis or meiosis, will be condensed to form chromosomes. Usually in biology, the terms homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids often get confusing. So what's the difference between homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids? Let's look at an example. A normal somatic or body cell contains 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes, as you can see in this karyotype. Karyotypes are collections of an individual's chromosomes. You can see each pair lined up in order of size, while the sex chromosomes are at the end and represent pair number 23. Homologous chromosomes are non-identical copies of a chromosome, one from each parent. Cells with two complete sets of chromosomes, one from each parent, are called diploid cells and are represented as 2n equals 46, where 2n represents the number of complete sets, so one from dad and one from mom, which makes two, and 46 represents the total number of chromosomes. So if each set has 23 chromosomes, then 23 plus 23 is 46. So diploid cells are represented as 2n equals 46. Now let's say that the cell wants to divide into two identical daughter cells. As we learned in a previous video, this process is called mitosis. Mitosis is preceded by interphase. Interphase has three subphases, gap 1, S, and gap 2. In synthesis, chromosomes are duplicated. Therefore, each individual homologous chromosome now has a sister, one that is identical to the original. The original chromosomes with its duplicated pairs are called sister chromatids. Sister chromatids are connected together during mitosis and meiosis II by a centromere. Sister chromatids are pulled apart during anaphase in mitosis and anaphase II in meiosis II. This is a very zoomed in example of the splitting of sister chromatids in one cell during anaphase II. Remember that in meiosis, cell division occurs twice. The first division splits homologous chromosomes, while the second division splits sister chromatids. As you can see, individual sister chromatids are brought to the opposite ends. Right after sister chromatids are split, they will be individually called chromosomes again. The resulting daughter cells will contain only one set of chromosomes. Cells with only one set of chromosomes are called haploid cells, and they're represented by n equals 23, where n is the number of complete sets, which is 1, and 23 represents the total number of chromosomes. Now here is a summary of everything that we've learned. 1. Homologous chromosomes are non-identical copies of a chromosome, one from each parent. Two. Cells containing two sets of chromosomes, one from each parent, are called diploid cells and are represented as 2n equals 46. 3. Sister chromatids are the duplicated pair of chromosomes after the S phase and interphase. And 4. Cells with only one set of chromosomes are called haploid cells and are represented as n equals 23. 
Thanks for watching. You can book your free online demo session today. Please visit us at fullpotentialtutor.com or call us at 1-833-776-8887. You can also follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Bye!